so today I'm going to talk about something called Maxwell's Equations. And it's my first video in like a three-part series where I'm going to just talk about some really cool science topics, right? So give me five minutes of your time. I promise it'll be worthwhile. First one's going to be on Maxwell's Equations. The second one might be on quantum mechanics, which will absolutely blow your mind. I definitely encourage you to, to watch that video I put out. Um, it'll be very surprising. And the third one is going to be on maybe the, the science behind shielding, which I think is important to a lot of the viewers. All right, so let's talk about Maxwell's Equations. Well, these are four laws that were all lumped together that describe essentially how electric charge, magnetic fields, uh, all, all relate to one another, okay? And so we're going to walk through those four and talk about what they mean, and I'll even do a very short demonstration um, to show you how it might work. All right, so first thing is the first one's called Gauss's Law of Static Electric Fields, all right? And it basically just says that the divergence of the electric field, that is, the amount that goes out of some bounded space versus what came in, the total amount that goes out is going to be the charge density divided by some constant. Now, what does that mean in real life? It means that if you have some volume or some space with a bunch of charge in it, some electric charge, they're all going to generate these electric field lines. And the more charge you put in there, the more electric fields you're going to have coming out. I think it's pretty, pretty common sense, but that's what it's saying, right? In words, the electric flux passing through a surface is proportional to the charge inside, right? Now, this, this term here, this del dot E, this is mathematically what it means. It's the change in the electric, the X component of the electric field with respect to X plus the change in the Y component of the electric field with respect to Y and then so forth with the Z direction, right? So, but it's really just measuring how they change with respect to the space that you're in and that's going to equal um, that charge density divided by constant, right? So I think that one is fairly straightforward and easy enough to understand. The second one's very similar. It's called the Gauss's Law of the Static Magnetic Field. Now, Magnets are a little different because if you think about if you have a magnet inside of a space or a volume, the magnetic field lines always come back in on themselves, right? They go out the north and come in around the south. So they're never just like a point that's emitting magnetic field, unlike a charge. So they're called, they're not monopoles, right? They always have two sides to them. And because of that, whatever goes out always comes back in, right? And so the net uh, dispersion of them, if you will, uh, is zero. There's not going to be any going out that don't come back in. All right, and that's all this says is that the divergence is equal to zero. The total magnetic flux through a closed surface equals zero because there are no magnetic monopoles, right? So that's, again, a fairly straightforward idea. Now, the next two have to do with time varying things, right? And they're probably a little more interesting. The first one is Faraday's law, and it says this, the curl of the electric field is equal to the negative time variation of the magnetic field. So, hmm, how? What does that mean? Well, curl has to do with a rotating field, a field that's going around something, all right? So in words, there's a couple ways to think about this. The rotation of the electric field de is dependent on the rate of change of the magnetic field, all right? The more the magnetic field is changing with time, the more you're going to get this rotating electric field around it. And likewise, the changing magnetic flux, right, changing magnetic flux through a surface creates an EMF or a, a voltage, a potential, that generates a current, and that current creates an opposing magnetic field. Now, that may be a little more than you could digest there, but here's what it's saying. If I have a time-varying magnetic field, it creates a current which creates another magnetic field that opposes my first variating one, right? That's kind of weird. What, why is that important? I'm going to show you this by just a little bit of a demonstration, and it's really pretty cool to show, right? So what I've got is I've got a couple of pipes and a magnet, all right? So I'm going to drop the magnet down through the pipe here, and we'll just count how long it takes to come out the other side. All right, this is just a PVC pipe, just a magnet. Here we go. Now, it won't take long. Here we go. All right, it just falls right through, right? Gravity takes over. It just falls. So maybe it takes a quarter of a second or something like that. Now, let's do the same experiment again, but with a copper pipe. Now, copper is non-ferrous, so it's not going to stick to it. So that's not what's happening. What's happening is as the magnet falls, it's a time-varying magnetic field because it's varying with position here. It's going to create a current in the copper, which is going to create another magnetic field pushing up on the magnet, right? Which is kind of weird. And if you looked at it down through the top, you could see that happening. But let's just watch it. Let's see how long it takes for the magnet to fall through. Again, this is just a copper piece of pipe, right? Let's just try it here. Here we go. Let go. Now notice it does not just fall right out. All right, we'll wait, we'll wait. It's still coming down the pipe, right? Because there's force being exerted on the magnet. We wait. It takes quite a long time, and then it falls out, all right? So what was a quarter second, maybe now is, I don't know, 10 seconds or something like that. And again, the magnet, if you look down in it, you'd see it, it's falling very, very slowly, right? 
gravity is trying to make it fall, but there's this counter magnetic field that's pushing up on it, all right? And that is a great example of this Faraday's law, okay? And I just kind of drew what I was doing right there, okay? So an interesting experiment. If you've never tried it, it's worth doing. Get a strong magnet, get a copper pipe, and try it. It's really cool. The last one is Ampere's law, all right? And it says the curl of the magnetic field, again, a circling magnetic field, is equal to one of two things added together. You could have a fixed current, that's this J, so just some current passing in a wire, just a DC current, or you could have a time-varying electric field with some constant out front, all right? So either time-varying electric fields or steady-state currents can cause a circling B field, a curling B field, all right? In words, a current or time-varying electric field results in a circulating magnetic field, all right? Pretty straightforward, but very useful to know, all right? A, a very simple example is kids, maybe in fifth or sixth grade, often do a little experiment that demonstrates this. They probably don't really understand what they're doing, but this is what they do. They take a battery and they hook it to a coil of wire and they wrap a coil of wire around a nail. Right? The wire is insulated so it's not touching the nail. goes around the nail and what they've done now is they've driven current around this wire and into the battery. Right? So current is flowing around there and that creates a magnetic field which goes around and closes on itself through the nail and it makes the nail magnetic, right? Because these magnetic field lines make it magnetic at the tip. And they could pick up paper clips and things like that. You have sort of this little magnet experiment. And it's a very simple experiment, but it, it shows you how this fixed current also results in a magnetic field, which is really pretty cool. All right, so these are the four laws, is what they're called, of Maxwell's equations, right? And all four of them are unique and interesting in their own right. You gotta take your hat off to Maxwell for figuring them out. They lead to some other interesting things, which are a little beyond this talk, but I just want to point them out. So one, one thing that they lead to is propagating electromagnetic waves. And the way that works is you drive an, a, a current up and down, so it's time varying some conductor. That generates a magnetic field around it, which generates an electric field, which generates a circling magnetic field, and this goes on and on. And that creates a wave propagation, the traveling electromagnetic wave. And those are described by some very specific equations called wave equations. All right, so this is it. This is Maxwell's equations. I hope this was useful, kind of gave you a very quick overview of what they are. Again, this is just the first of maybe a few uh, science uh, topics that I want to talk about. The next one's going to be quantum mechanics. Now, don't miss that one. I promise you, it's going to be really fascinating.